Hello, this is a campaign trail. You're on Politicals on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadou. This week, we have an exciting guest for you. He's trying to become a member of parliament after having done a number of things in the telecommunication world. He even did something in civil society activism. But we'll find out how really easy or difficult is it going to be for someone like that to transmogrify and become a member of parliament in an area that is held by a very critical member of the government. <music> So my guest for Politicals today is called Nenyi George Anda. He's an MPP parliamentary nominee for the Iwutu Senya West constituency in the central region. He wants to be an MP. Welcome to Politicals. Thank you, my brother. Sandra. Why do you want to become an MP? Are you not content with life? Um, first, let me say good day to your viewers. Um, I think it's an opportunity to serve. It's an opportunity to give back to Ghana, what Ghana has done for me and for a lot of other people. It's an opportunity to work and make sure that Nanado becomes president and an opportunity to make Ghana work again. There I are think, so many people who think really going to parliament is not work, it's actually pleasure because you sit on committees and you take our taxpayers' money, you finish four years and you're giving and a gratuity which is huger than the pension of a farmer in a cocoa growing area? Um, I think that is a, a misconception. Um, I believe that the work of the parliamentarians are very important as far as developing Ghana is concerned. If we have good parliamentarians, there's a great opportunity for proper laws to be made in the country there's a great opportunity for, for people's livelihood to change. Um, I think there's a bit of a misunderstanding where people believe that the parliamentarian is responsible, directly responsible for infrastructure development within his constituency. Um, there's a difference between lobbying for infrastructure and being ultimately responsible. And the other thing too is that there's a big misconception um, about the life of a politician. I, I believe politics is about being going into a vocation rather than taking it as a career. When you go into politics as a vocation, it's about the people, it's about making an improvement in your livelihood, it's about leaving a mark that tomorrow your constituents or your electorate can come and say that you work with them to improve their lifestyle and, and they can say positive things about you and about your party. When you go into politics with a perception or with a, cons with, with a thinking that it's a career, then that is where your priority becomes how much money you can make. And I think for people like myself and a lot of other people that are going to frontline politics with the NPP party, it's clear that it's not about us seeing politics as a career. We see politics as a vocation, it's time for us to serve, it's time for us to get off the fence. It's time for us to get into frontline politics and be, be there for our people, with our people, and to make Ghana. Your party and your flag bearer, Nana Kufado, have been accused by opponents of making outrageous and audacious promises to the electorate just to capture political power. What are your own specific promises in your constituency? Uh, well, I, I think first let me react to the statement that you've made about um, Nana Ado making outrageous promises. I think every Every promise that Nanado has made is a promise that will be delivered. Um, I'm not sure which of these promises you are talking about that are perceived to be outrageous apart from um, the the, the, our, our political opponents trying to poo-poo these promises because they obviously know that we, we are on top of our game and they obviously see power slipping, slipping out of your hands. I mean, if you, take, if you take the issue about the one district, one factory, I mean, this is, this is a policy that would definitely happen. I mean, they are, they are, there's a lot that has been done. The blueprint is there. This is going to be a PPP. So there's, there's nothing about it not being feasible. It is there already. The, the blueprint is there already. If you talk about, about, the, um, about Nanado talking about one village, one dam, okay? It's, it's, it, if you look at the amount of four-wheel drives that are being dashed away, okay? If you look at 
at the amount of outboard motors that are being dashed away. If you look at the amount of sewing machines that are being dashed away by the ruling party. And we are saying that, listen, these monies can go into building dams that will serve the purpose of irrigation. It will serve the purpose of providing water for, for, for livestock. It will serve the purpose of providing water to some extent, even for households. Okay, there's nothing outrageous about it. Let's talk as about far as, Let's as far as the Wutu Senior West is concerned, there are a number of key challenges that the constituency faces. I'll come back to you, but just a quick one. So you talk about the one district, uh, one factory per district. There are 216 districts, which means you're going to have 216 factories. What business model are you going to use to run these? It's a PPP. I think Alan, Alan has spoken severally about this. If you look, if you... Alan has if you run an area of government, presidential special initiatives. They have woefully failed. I, I, I don't know when you say what you mean by they have woefully failed. How many of them because can we point to? At least you know that the IUNC stack factory was which, was... which was revived by the NDC government after it collapsed in 2007. I, I don't think you've got your facts right. Okay, I, I don't think you've got your facts Give right. Give me the contrary. Iensu Stat Factory started going down under this government. Not 2007? No, no. It started going down under this government. The workers stopped being paid under... under this government? Which under, it? It, it? It collapsed, okay, after the NPP have handed over power. After 2008. I have, I have given you 2007 as a time. I'm telling you this after it, it 2008. Went it's, it was it, revived recently by Hanatete, I mean, under Hanatete's watch as member of parliament for your area. Well, I'm, I'm giving you the facts on the ground. You can feel free to check what it is. I'm telling you the INC Start Factory, it collapsed after 2008 after we have handed power. But you don't have a specific year. You have told me, oh, well, 2008 is a year, my brother. You said after 2008. Yes, I'm saying that after 2008. So it collapsed uh, in 2008. It collapsed after 2008. So that could be 2016 or 2009. Well, we handed over power after 2008. The fact that I'm making, the point I'm stressing is that it wasn't under the MPP that the UNC Start Factory collapsed. Very well. Okay. Now, now but, but it has been revived now, and your candidate is going to point to that as a significant success for her side and i'm referring to hannah Tete, the foreign affairs minister who you are contesting well i don't I, I don't think you have your facts right i mean a foreign affairs minister has nothing to do with with the revival of a, of a, of a, of a, of a starch factory it's her government. if you go it is not her government the government is the government of ghana it is not ndc's money that is being used okay it is not i mean we should get we should get these things right Okay, if we look, if we look at what is happening in the IUNC Start Factory, the model that was supposed to be applied is the model that they've gone back to now, where they've gone back to a, a private partner, okay, to work with a private partner, um, and that is what that is what we are looking at to see whether it will work. I mean, it's it's, it's early days yet. I mean, of course, I wish I wish the investors the best of luck. Um, I wish that they'll follow the model. I wish, I wish the outgrowth farmers the best of luck. I hope that they will be able to supply the needed raw materials. And of course, I wish Guinness Ghana Breweries the best of luck so that they can take the end product, okay? You see, this thing is not about MPP and DC. It's about Ghana, okay? It's about doing things that are right and about making a difference in the livelihood of people and, 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 and making, making, taking the right decisions. You were talking about what promises your, I am making for you to see your way. Mm. Um, again, it's not about making promises. It's about showing what you can do and, and making sure that you do those things for the people. Um, election 2016 is not going to be um, about what I say. It's going to be about what the people want to do and about what God is telling the people, the direction that God is giving the people to go to. Um, there are a lot of key, there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed in the Wutu Senior West. Um, there's the the biggest issue as I've picked up, well, the two the two top the the two top issues. Okay. The priorities for you. Well, let's look at what what the people are saying. Okay. okay? The two the key issues: unemployment for the um to, the youth not having jobs when they finish school they don't have anything to do. Is leading, to, is leading to a lot of social challenges, teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, I mean, um, people doing all sorts of things, not doing anything meaningful with your lives. 
There's also the bit about poor infrastructure. Um, the roads network are extremely bad in the Wutu Senior West. Um, one, of the, one of the major roads, the, the Bojoase to Obratre Road, is in a very deplorable state. Um, in, 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 in 2014, um, we tried to plough the road, well, not plough, we tried to grade the oh, road. Who are we? NPP, okay. okay, because the electorate were complaining. They were complaining seriously about the state of the road. The people living in those, in those areas were complaining because the, the taxi drivers and the lorry drivers were charging them a premium because of the state of the road. After 8 o'clock, you wouldn't get any taxi. And you did this as an opposition? Yes. We, we graded. Did you source the funding for that? Well, I mean, we have our source of funding. We graded the road. We were stopped in the middle of grading the road. Mm. You are from Senya, I believe, and that is a stronghold of the, of the opposition NPP. So it should be cool talk for you, and I'm referring to the community. But other townships like Bodrasi, Bontrasi, we understand, are the stronghold of the NDC. Your incumbent member of parliament, and I'm referring to the constituency, is the Minister for Foreign Affairs. How are you going to beat her? You see, um, Nanado keeps on saying something that the battle is the Lord's. This competition that we are going into is not about my mind. You know the story about David and Goliath. They called us political novices when we started going into the constituency to make a difference in people's lives. Fortunately for us, the people of Ewutu Senior West have bought into our vision. The people of Ewutu Senior West are properly engaged as to what leadership stands for. The people of Ewutu Senior West knows they know what the difference is. The people of Ewutu Senior West are the people that are saying that they are going to vote for change. The people of Ewutu Senior West are the people that are saying that they want power to do more for themselves, they want to do more for their community, they want to do more for their families, they want to do more for Ghana. I am a humble servant. I'm working with the people to bring the difference. It's not just about what I am doing, but it's about what the electorate believe in. It's about the messaging that the electorates are hearing. It's about the electorate themselves that are saying that if somebody has been an MP for four years, and the person has been a trade minister for another four years, and the person is currently an MP and a trade minister for another four years, that is 12 years where, where a big difference could have happened in, in the Wutu Senior West. So if you've been there for 12 years, and a Wutu Senior West, until some of us came onto the scene, was not a constituency to write home about. You had a wonderful Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you haven't done it for 12 years, okay, what again, how, what again are you going to do? In, 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 why are you asking for a mandate for another four years? Okay, some of us have just come in. Okay, we've just come in. We have looked at health issues. We've done a lot in terms of medical outreach. We've done a lot in terms of free medical, medical outreaches. We've done free legal services. We've done, we've, 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 um, we've refurbished ball holes. We have, we, have, we have helped the community in terms of getting them to understand what, what they themselves can do better for themselves. We are, we are doing a lot of engagement with the people uh, and there's a lot of potential in the Wuti Senior West. You, you did that in 2012 and you had a wonderful message in 2012. Your candidate lost by 10% of the total votes cast. You are a political novice for want of a better word because you are just joining the free. This is someone who has led a campaign to bring President Mills into office in 2009 and I'm referring to the Foreign Affairs Minister who you are contesting. You do not think that it's going to be a battle for a Goliath with a David, no, but no, David you know, who is a... Don't let, us, who is an, don't, don't let us get this wrong. I've never said a Witsenia West is going to be a walk in the park. Okay, um, I think a Witsenia West, you guys say it yourself, is probably going to be the mass watch constituency in the 2016 elections. Okay, I mean, I think most of the time when I talk to journalists, they say among the top 10 is a Wutus in your way. So I clearly, clearly it's not, it's not going to be a walk in the park. But let me tell you something. In 2012, did you go and monitor MPP primaries in the Wutus in your West? In this election, you went to monitor primaries in the Wutus in your West. A Wutus in your West has changed. 
whatever we do in the Wutis Nya West will make the news. And indeed, we had live transmission, live coverage, not just from your station, from loads of other stations in the Wutis Nya West. It is not about me, okay? It's about the team that is behind the, the effort. It's about the, the, the way the people have been maltreated. It's about the way people feel they've been led by somebody who's arrogant and they are seeing somebody who's selfless, somebody who's humble, somebody is using, is using his time and his effort for them. Working, Hannah Teta is arrogant, working, I haven't mentioned Hannah Teta's name. You said okay. they have been led by someone who is arrogant. I President well, Mahoma, perhaps? Well, you know, you know what the founder of the NDC referred to somebody as. Who? Okay. I'm not, don't, don't push words into my mouth. You know what I'm talking about. Say it. I'm, I'm marketing Nene George and then Nanado. You know, tell me to mention Nanado, I'll mention Nanado's name. Okay, for every name that I mention, it creates a top of mind. I'm a marketer, I'm a strategist. You are afraid of the name, Hanateta. You do not want to mention it. Is that I am the case? proud of Nanado. I'm proud of Nene George and If you want me to mention those names, I'll mention. It's not my style in marketing to focus on my 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 opponents. I respect my opponents, but I'm not going to give my opponents the opportunity of making reference to their names. For every name that I mentioned, it it it, it creates a top of mind awareness for you. Very well. Okay, and I'm a marketer, so I don't play that game. I would I would sell my candidate. I will sell my flag bearer, Nana Adudanku Akufuado. I will sell his running mate, Al Haji Bahamudi Bahumia, and I will sell myself, Nene George. And I will sell a Wuchi Senior West, but that is where my focus is. Thank you very much. The name, Nene George Anda, is a name you should be watching out. He's going to be on the ballot sheet if the Electoral Commission clears him and he becomes a candidate. For now, he's an MPP parliamentary nominee for Ewutu Senior West in the Central Region. Thank you for joining us. You're most welcome, brother. Take care. And that's how we end today's edition of Politicals. I believe it was exciting for you to watch. Do join us again same time next week with another explosive one. My name is Umaru Sandamadu. Thank you for watching.